I'm always saying people ignore picnic areas. Now they're just blocking them completely. Is there enough room around there? I guess there is. The crazy thing is, these guys were eating their lunch in the pickup bed. The bird trail switchback sliced through one of the few places in the water pocket fold where there's a dirt slope enough that they could put switchbacks in. The trail was originally a sheep trail used by John Atlantic Burr in the 1880s that was expanded to a road during the uranium boom of the 1950s. One of the most common questions I hear about the switchbacks is how difficult they are to drive and if four-wheel drive is needed. Honestly, you could drive a passenger car down as long as the road isn't wet and muddy. Apart from bad corrugations in the road that might rattle your teeth out, you could easily drive this in a Toyota Camry. The main thing I'd advise is just making sure that your vehicle is in a lower gear so that you can utilize the engine braking as you're going down. You don't want to burn up your brakes by riding them the whole way and then lose it right at the end. At the bottom of the switchbacks you're in Grand Gulch, the valley that runs along the base of the water pocket fold. Hulls Creek draining the area is usually dry most of the year. wagon trail once ran down the middle of this to cross the Colorado at the bottom. The remains of the old wagon trail can still be seen in some places. Shortly after leaving the national park the trail becomes paved again. I'd be remiss not to mention the controversy of paving the bird trail. It seems anything before the internet is now forgotten by time. Paving of the bird trail was the major controversial debate of the 1980s, and in 1991 the movement to pave it won out. And while I was against paving it when it was being debated, now that we have a third of a century in hindsight, I actually think it was a good move. I bring this up because there's a nearby dirt road that is now seeing the exact same discussion for the exact same reasons. To fully explain why I think it's better paved than dirt would take a whole video in itself, and I'm sure it would have people from both sides of the debate fuming in the comments, so we'll just save that for another day. But having driven both and seen the impact firsthand, I think this road is the preferential of the two. I was planning on finding a place to camp along the road to Halls Creek Overlook, but learned of a better site from another YouTube channel I recommend everybody check out. Just give the rancher corral a little bit of space. They'll probably appreciate it, and you don't want cows in your camp anyway. While setting up my tent for the night, I had a visitor walking around the edge of camp. There aren't really any predatory threats out in the desert. This coyote is probably the only one you'll ever see, and being only the size of a small dog, they know enough to stay away from people. The next day I walked up onto the rim to look out over the terrain between Capitol Reef and the Henry Mountains, and saw just how rugged the land is on the bullfrog side of the fold. The land just seems so flat and unassuming from the road, but just alongside the land is carved into massive canyons by rainwater runoff. The short side road leads past some random art made out of scavenged debris and out to an overlook of Bullfrog Canyon.
There's actually no established trails through the bottom of the canyon, but I did see some cattle tracks, so I assume that local ranchers ride horses into it occasionally. So while it's not undiscovered land, it is relatively untouched land compared to the usual tourist areas. Let's see a uh, bullfrog down there. First glimpse of Lake Powell. My family didn't have a boat when I was growing up, so we never really vacationed in this corner of the state. But I was really surprised at how interesting the terrain was. There's more out here than just the Bullfrog Marina. Even planning this trip, I kind of figured the last half of the bird trail was just going to be a relatively boring drive back to the highway after that first half. I think there's as much to explore on this side of the water pocket fold than on the other, but I never really hear much about trails and places to explore here south of the Henry Mountains. is at its maximum level, this area would be technically a part of the lake. I'm not sure how deep it gets, it's been so long since it was actually a full pool like that, but the lake actually does come up to this level when it's full. Obviously right now it's just a drainage because the lake hasn't been full in ages. I'm not sure what they would do if it got to its full level again, if this whole road would be closed off, or if they have a way of bridging it, or maybe when it's full, you know, you can still ford it and it's only two feet deep or something like that. I did notice one area about half a mile off the road that looked a little odd in Google Maps, very similar to Goblin Valley as seen from above, so I walked down to check it out. This isn't marked on any maps, but I noticed it in Google Earth. It looked like it had some hoodoos and some kind of, you know, rock goblin top type formations. And sure enough, perfect formation for that. I haven't seen any other footprints in the area, so I don't know how much traffic it gets. It's only a half mile off the road, but like I said, it's unmarked. Leans. How's it not falling? I was seriously afraid to get within six feet of this thing and wouldn't even breathe loudly because I was afraid that my voice might cause it to fall. The land was also covered in these weird crystalline rocks. You could see the light shining through them. It's illegal to take rocks from National Park System sites and this land is officially a part of Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. But as a general rule, I wouldn't recommend taking rocks home from legal places either, unless your hobby is legitimately rock hounding. When you get home, you just have a pile of random rocks that you eventually forget where they came from. I wrapped up the journey at yet another empty National Park picnic area. Although, to be fair, this was late season during a pandemic. Hopefully this awesome picnic area gets more people enjoying it during the main tourist and boating season. 
I'm pretty sure these facilities were made with the idea that the water would come right up here into this plain in front of us where all the tamarisk are. But the water's been so low for so long. All that should just be filled up lake. You can still see some of the bathtub rings over on the hills here. Overall, the Burr Trail is a great scenic drive. I think more people rush through it in a day as a scenic alternative to Highway 12, but there's so much to see and do along this road that even my three-day trip barely scratched its surface. Mm -hmm.